back up and then suffered that tough injury. He'll be out for six months. This is the starting lineup, and you focus on Horford and Jack Michael Martinez. Their strength, the Dominicans, happens to be potentially a Brazilian weakness. Well, you're you're absolutely right. They really are strong uh, uh, in the center and uh, the power forward position with those two players. And, you know, I'd like to see them bring uh, Al Horford to the foul line. He's very, very quick. He's got a lot more quickness than Tiago Splitter and, and uh, the Brazilian centers. And if they can isolate him, spread the offense, I think they can be very, very successful. Uh, that's one thing I do. Now, the other uh, player that really has to... Uh, uh, come alive you might say is uh, uh, is Garcia number nine I mean he has not played well and uh, he's a great great shooter now for the Brazilians Marcelinho Huertas the point guard who's having a fabulous tournament had his worst night eight days ago against the Dominican yeah he really did I don't look for him to have that night uh, again tonight he is a terrific point guard uh, and uh, he's the one that makes Brazil uh, go this is the team that Gets out and runs. Their offense really is created by their fast break and early offense. The team shoots well. They shoot 40% from threes, 59% from twos, 52% overall. This team will press you defensively. Uh, and they are an excellent, excellent uh, defensive team. Remember, he had 10 turnovers that day against the Dominican. He really fed the Dominican fast break. Brazil, a team that tends to outscore its opponents by at least six points on average on fast break points. If the Dominican is able to make them play half court off uh, offense, it improves their chances of winning. Brazil um, finished fourth in Las Vegas in the qualifier, Olympic qualifier in 2007, seventh in San Juan in 2003, and sixth in San Juan in 1999. They were the last team to get on board for the 1996 Atlanta Olympics in that tournament, Neuquén, who was a star at the time for Brazil, none other than legend Oscar Schmidt and Hall of Famer Oscar Schmidt, as you see, Magnano, who's a tough taskmaster, never satisfied and demands absolute commitment on defense. Uh, he did not have Nene. Nene is, uh, according to Captain Alex, really not part of the team anymore. Uh, Anderson Barajá was injured. Leandrinho Barbosa was recovering from, an, from a wrist injury, but also sent his regrets. They were not really counting on him either. This is what Brazil has right now to fight. And they've brought in three players who are 21 years of age or younger who have had significant minutes, of course, when the team is up, but also in significant moments in the tournament that allows them to get some burn and get some experience. You'll see them in this game as well against the Dominican Republic. Poli Deportivo here at Mar del Plata Stadium, built in 95 for the... 1995 Pan American Games, then refurbished in 2008 for the Davis Cup competition, and then they spent quite a little bit of money trying to get this stadium basically back to mint shape. An interesting player for Brazil, also who has had a quiet, great tournament, Gail, has been Guilherme. Giovanoni, who has become their top scorer. Yeah, he really has. In fact, he leads everybody in uh, field goal percentages, shooting almost 59 from the floor. He is a terrific spot-up shooter, uh, he, particularly from the baseline. And uh, in this offense, in which starts really with the set offense with Huetes and Splitter at the high pick and roll, and then trying to get Huetes down the middle or the screen to the screen pass to. Uh, uh, Tiago splitter if it's not there he's down the lane he kicks it out they swing the ball and uh, Gio Manon Ononi is going to be one who spots up at the baseline Horford and splitter as Paul throws the ball up it'll go to Dominican but quickly stolen by Alex the Brazilian captain over to Marcelino Huerta Giovanni is an undersized white white as you see bias block Huerta the ball's loose and it's picked up by Horford Giovanni is an undersized power forward, and Martinez should have an easy time taking him down, all the way down underneath the basket to the low post as Flores starts their offense. The Dominican team that is just learning to play together in this half court. As Flores does an up and under, shoots from the free throw line, in and out, rebounded by Giovanni. And here comes Brazil. Tuetes running the point. They're running Marquinho off screens as Spieler tries to post down low. Guilherme over to Marquinhos. He's a small forward who's two meters seven. 
tough shot, but he makes it, and Brazil goes up top, 2-0. Terrific crossover dribble by Maquinho going to the line. He's big at 6'9", but can handle the ball and is very, very quick, as we just saw there, getting to the rim. Horford tries to get, take Marquinhos all the way down low. He'll yeah, go right. Strength. He'll go right. he come back over his shoulder. But he misses. Rebounded by Splitter. Dribble handoff to Alex. Up top to Splitter to Marquinhos. Marquinhos has great starts to have. Yeah, he's too quick. This is a bad matchup right there. Stops, pops the, from the, the elbow. Republic. It's good. Yeah, he's a, a terrific outside player. Again, with Joe and his quickness, the little crossover dribble. It is a bad matchup for M Martinez on the perimeter. But the Dominican has to take the ball down low. They already did with Horford. Let's see if they do that with Jack Michael. Garcia. Now nah, this, is, this is a great matchup, Garcia. Now we're going to see my, a, a little uh, isolation one-on-one. -on -one. He likes to do this. Goes up over the shoulder. Gets and he the, makes the basket and gets the foul from Thiago Splitter. You know, Martinez is a undersized big man. Uh, however, he is so, so strong. And he just moved, uh, as we see here, he moves nope. Splitter right out of the way. They and call the foul before, before he got the, the ball shot. out of bounds. Yes, before the shot. So no basket. Dominican, 13 seconds in their possession. They're trying to get Garcia also off. Number nine, really guarded well by Garcia. Long shot by Horford. No yeah, good. Yeah. That's with the rebound. It's 4 nothing Brazil. Yeah, a little too quick for Horford that time. He can make that shot. This shot a little too quick. There's a screen and roll. High low, deflected by Martinez, intercepted by Martinez. Here comes Flores. Garcia, guarded by Alex. Yeah, Alex is right on him. And a foul by Mar No. Yes, a far by Marquinhos, grabbing Horford. That is his first. That's a, that's a very good matchup, too. Marquinho and Horford. Second team foul for Brazil. Just underway. Two minutes, 20 seconds gone by in the first. Boy, Garcia staying right with... Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, Alex is staying right with uh, <laughs> Garcia. He Both is. of them are Garcias. I, I guess I can't go wrong there. Hard-nosed is what the word that best describes... Alex, the captain for Brazil. Extended pick and roll. Nice block by Garcia, who's become a blocking specialist in this tournament. And the foul by Huertas is to prevent a fast break by the Dominican. Yeah, he got automatic foul there. Forces Dominican Republic to take the ball out of bounds. Dominican probably could not get the fast break or the early offense. And there's a reach in the foul. Out of bounds, Dominican Republic. Eulis Baez will inbound. A player who now plays in Spain. Had a calf, right calf injury. Sat three games. He played the last game for the Dominican against Argentina. Yeah, isolation here. Two-man game. Yep. Re no, repost. Yep, against Splitter. A little screen, a pop, shot, it's good. Jack Michael Martinez now. Yeah, we see Gets the, the first points for the Dominican. They're down two to Brazil. Yeah, we see the versatility of Jack Michael Martinez. Takes the dribble, backs up, faces a basket with a little... Oh, great back door. An additional pass, and a block by Horford. Had him measured like a tailor. I'll tell you what, he has got great elevation, great... Timing, and that is the second or third block, sensational block, that we've seen in this tournament by Ho Horford. We're going to take a look. He comes from behind. Splitter does not see him. Marcelino Huertas with a splitter screen. He tries to pass, but it's over to Guilherme. No good. Splitter touches the ball, but it's over to U.S. Baez. Got some issues with that ball. Hands it off to Garcia. Up ahead to Jack Michael. Horford wants it. Michael drives. Bang. They're going right at Splitter. Bang, bang. bang. Over goes the right, right shoulder. Hook shot. No good. Gets his own rebound. Oh, he's, That's he's a specialty a of the house. Here he's goes. A, he's a monster. In Blocked there. by Guilherme and by Splitter. And he's slow in getting back on defense. And Alex takes advantage of it. He draws the foul from Eulis Baez. He'll go to the line. Yeah, and uh, Baez doesn't like the call, but it was a good one. As Alex is terrific on the break with great acceleration. He goes right in. Goes right to the hoop. Creates some body contact, goes up with the right hand. There's the pass. We're going to take a look at this block one more time. I mean, it is, Horford is all over that ball. Alex makes the first. Um, you know, I'm really intrigued with uh, Alex Garcia guarding Francisco Garcia. Alex gives up a couple inches. He's only 6'3". Francisco Garcia is about 6'7". But he is staying right with him, and he's extremely quick, and he'll body up on him. Jack Michael at the high post over to Francisco Garcia. 
Over to Jack Michael, a fake, a drive, and a lay-in. Yeah, really a nice screen and roll. Good pass there by Francisco Garcia. Nice roll there by Martinez. Guilherme yeah. left all alone, and that is what's killed a number of teams in this tournament, including Puerto Rico last night. Yeah, that's a very good example of the Brazilian early offense hitting the uh, open man. A gamble by splitter, bad pass. Horford grabs it, throws a hook shot, no good. Five-point game, Brazil is up almost halfway through the first quarter. I think John Calipari just called a timeout. Let's see, Guilherme fakes, drives, shoots and misses. Martinez with a rebound. His third, Flores against Huertas. Over to Francisco Garcia, tough shot off the curl. It's good. Yeah, that is a great shot there by Francisco Garcia, and that's what he does, does best. He, he comes around the screen, gets the ball. He's a pop-and-shoot type of guy, and he needs to score and do that more often for Dominican Republic. He has had a difficult time only shooting 31% threes. Nice pass to the splitter outside to Alex. Over to Marquinhos, all along in the corner. No good. Rebounded by Guilherme. Dominican should grab these rebounds. Oh, a shove to Martinez. And a miss going left by Splitter. He was all alone. It was just him in the rim at the end. He has had a tough time making shots in this tournament. 52% shooter. Horford. Pops. Short. Gets his own rebound, but he's grabbed by either Guilherme or Marquinhos. Guilherme puts his hand up. Let's see. We're going to say here, there's uh, Martinez, goes right at the uh, basket, and Splitter a little slow recovery. And then here's the early offense and the basket. By the wide open by Gio Givanoli. As we also see the shot by Garcia. It is a two-point game. The Dominican tries to get oh, up top of this tough, shot, and he makes shot. it. The Dominican oh, Republic my. goes ahead, up in front, 10-9. to nine. Boy, there's a catch-and-shoot. Francisco Garcia, and that was a tough shot coming to his left that time. Huertas falls down, so does Garcia. Al, I mean, Francisco, El Flaco, here comes the three. Awkward looking shot, but it's worth three points, and Brazil recovers a lead. Brazil is an excellent outside shooting. Shoots 40% from three. However, the last two times these uh, two teams met, they only shot 23%. Flores, gonna, Flores he, penetrates, but yeah. then he has no, no idea what to do next. And he picks up the dribble, gets himself in trouble. Here comes a shot by Flores. No good. Rebounded by Rafa Hetzheimer, who comes into the game for a splitter. Marquinho. Huertas all alone. No good. Rebounded by Rafa Hetzheimer. 19 points, 9 rebounds by this youngster against Argentina. Guilherme. No good. Rebounded by Martinez. No chance for fast break points for either team so far. They're playing Horford's right hand, which they should. He does not like to go left. He'll, he will spin, but he's coming back right. And he travels. Yep. He fakes left, but he'll always drive or end up on the right. Yeah, he, 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 need, he needs to learn to go to his left a little bit better, put that ball on the floor. He, he, he likes to go right. He comes back. He fakes. He travels. Yeah. He has shuffled his foot. Fisher got it right. A two-time NBA All-Star. Yeah, and he's off to a very, very slow start. He's 0 for 4, and only has one rebound thus far. Charlie Villanueva in the game for Jack Michael Martinez for the Dominican Republic. Let's see if Charlie can Slowly really make, make a contribution. He has not played well in this tournament. However, the last ball game, there were signs of some of return quickness um, that he did have. Recovering from a left ankle sprain, he's shooting 37% from the field. Rush shot by Alex Garcia. And Ronald Ramon takes the ball off court for the Dominican, the backup point guard. Garcia. Looking to, to shoot the ball from the outside. They, they got a switch. mismatch. Yeah, yeah. Mismatch. But look at Alex, how strong he is against Charlie here. A big mismatch. Squares up against the side of the backboard, grabs his own rebound, shoots short, rebounded by Ulysses Baez, grabbed by Alex. Shoots and scores finally. It's a, it's a 12 all game. Yeah, and yet we just saw right there the strength of Dominican Republic on the boards. They got three offensive rebounds. 10 10 
on the rebound category. We have a tie. As Words does, drives, gets the basket, gets the foul, and will go to the line. Well, he does a terrific job of using the screen and roll against the Dominican Republic. There's no one steps out. Horford does not step out. He goes right around uh, Ramon, right to the basket, no one to help. Marcelino Huertas. He is a, um, what's this? made two of three in the last game against these two teams. He is now a 75% free throw shooter. Oh, this is only his ninth free throw in the tournament. For a guy who drives into the lane and leads the tournament in field goal percentage inside the arc, he doesn't really draw a lot of fouls. There's a switch there. you got a mismatch. Yep. Oh, he there. gets shoved. Yeah, he, and he, Charlie Benoit just uh, goes he, right in. He absolutely. He just uses his straight. Nice play by Charlie. So this could be the X Factor as we see a pass inside the limit. Blocked by Charlie Benoit, but put in emphatically by Rafael Hetzheimer. And there again, we see how Brazil gets the ball out and runs. Two passes, a blocked shot, and then the follow through by Hetzheimer. They mm -hmm. are, you've got to get back, and you've got to get back in transition defense here if Dominican Republic's going to stop that. Minute 15 to go, three-point lead for Brazil. Horford drives left, stops, elbow. It's good from the left elbow, and now it's a one-point game with a minute to go in the first quarter. Yeah, and I like that move. He went left with the left hand, stopped, took the wide-open jump shot. There was no pressure. Marquinho guarded by Ulis Baez. Alex by Francisco Garcia. No relation. Here comes Marquinhos. Long shot, no good. Open rebound. Here comes Alex over to Marcelino Huertas. Open three. Offline, rebounded by Villanueva. And now the Dominican can take the lead with 30 seconds to go in the first. Villanueva drives hard. He's had trouble with offensive fouls. Bottled up and fouled by Marquinho. That is Marquinhos' is second. As we and see substitutions now. And Magnano is livid. As we walk here, he goes straight up. He does go straight up. Well, his arm went down. He's got all. Yeah, you're right. He did. He, he, he had it, and then he, he had it blocked, and then he reached down and followed through. Because he thought he had a block. As we see uh, Orlando Sanchez come in for the Dominican and Jack Michael Martinez back in the game. Charlie Villanueva having a very difficult year with the Detroit Pistons, then twisted that ankle, then was physically out of shape. He's still not in the perfect basketball shape. He's trying to do it as he plays well he's got some terrific skills for a big man and if he can get those together here that'll be a real good plus sign for the dominican republic alex wants to take um, francisco garcia out as they keep switching to the corner alex garcia drives by jack michael no good rebound by hetzheimer and a foul in the last second of the first quarter and Hetzheimer continues to play. There's the drive, goes to the reverse, doesn't make it. And there is Hetzheimer again. And he is continuing with his fine, fine play the last two ball games here he, for Brazil. I believe it is, yes, it's Jack Michaels Martinez's first foul. And the quarter's over officially. So we'll see a chance at a tie break here as the score reads 17 all. And this young man has been a pleasant surprise for Brazil. Now, I'm not saying Splitter. Um, he really has. I mean, Splitter is a great player, and he de deserves to start. But this young man has been a revelation. Eight and a half points per game. Shoots 64% from the floor. Just under four rebounds per game, but he's been playing better as the games become more and well, more important. Well, he's only averaged 14 minutes of all game. Now, he's got a, a lot of minutes the last ball game because he had 19 and 8. 19 points and 8 rebounds. But he only makes one of two, and as we go to break, Brazil leads the Dominican Republic 18-17 with a berth to the 2012 London Olympic Games at stake here in Mar del Plata.
Let's look at some of the stats. Dominican Republic are only shooting 31%, Brazil 33. That gives you an idea of the kind of pressure defense that both teams are playing. Two assists for Brazil, only one for Dominican Republic. Three blocks for Dominican Republic. Everything's pretty even, the score is even. If you keep Brazil to 33% shooting and 25% uh, three-point shooting, you've, you've gotten yourself a chance, and that's exactly why this game is so close at this point. Well, you're absolutely right, and, and uh, you know, Dominican Republic is uh, a 40% three-point free uh, three shooting team, uh, and uh, right now they are just shooting uh, from three-point range uh, 25%. And the last two times, last time these uh, teams met, they only shot 23%. So uh, Dominican Republic is closing out on the th uh, the three-point shooter, doing a nice job. They are also doing a good job, except uh, of keeping. Huertes out of the middle. They're stopping the penetration. He did get uh, to the to the rim once, but by and large, they've done a nice job. And Thiago Splitter has not scored. He, he has two rebounds. He's got two rebounds. Only played six minutes. So this will be and Francisco Garcia has hit two threes. He's two for two, uh, and that is in 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 my estimation really the X factor. You're going to get a, a good ball game from Horford, although he struggled from the uh, shooting from the floor. And you're going to get a nice ball game from Martinez. Francisco Garcia has to uh, make a terrific contribution. He's off to uh, a good start with six points here uh, in the first uh, quarter. Alongside Hall of Famer Gail Goodrich, this is Alvaro Martin. We start the second quarter. Marcelinho Machado, the veteran, is on the court for Brazil. Hedsheimer gets hammered by Orlando Sanchez. Uh, Sanchez is coming from the weak side there. He's got to get there sooner to help make them uh, make the all the way the cross court pass to the, the uh, offensive player that he's guarding on the baseline. As he, he, he's got to get there and pick up Hetzheimer. Hetzheimer did a nice job of rolling to the basket after setting the screen. Hetzheimer is a 25-year-old. His full name is Christoph Franz Hetzmann Zeta. He last uh, played this past season for Zaragoza in the ACB with a starter. 34 games, 10 points, almost six rebounds, and a 61% free throw shooter. Here he misses and continues to miss as the ball goes out of bounds. Nope. Orlando Sanchez with a great rescue, and the Dominican has the ball, but not the lead. They're down two to Brazil. Let's see what Dominican Republic can get here. They probably called something right out of the, the fast break. A strip and a foul by Guilherme. That's his second. Team's first. Yeah, they cleared the side for Charlie Villanueva, going left. We're going to take another look. There's the bump. Jeremy. Joer Guilherme. Guilherme does not like the call, but... I think he not only found him a couple times, found him on, on with, the, with the body on the way up and then uh, with on the wrist on the shot. The Dominican Republic has spent significant capital in trying to get these players here, especially players, NBA players like Villanueva, Horford, and Garcia, at least by paying their insurance, which was an unexpected um, expense that really... Um, for a while, there was, a, there was talk in the Dominican they may not be able to make to bring all three here to Mario Plata, but here they are. They've spared no expense. Hetzheimer, left-handed hook. That's what I'm saying. Boy, he He's got resources. Really, he is really coming along in this tournament. He made a terrific contribution once again. A nice little move left with a little left-handed hook shot over the right shoulder. He's lost <laughs> some weight, and it shows. Much more agile as he now guards. Jack Michael Martinez going left. Picks up the dribble. Over to... Charlie and Charlie charges oh, head timer. That happens like that. That's when you see the ankle. He just bowls his way in, no subtlety about it, and then commits the offensive foul. We're going to take another look. He goes left. He's there. Head timer steps out. Stop and go up. Gets the charge. We now see head timer on the defensive end as well as the offensive end. Brazil with a two point lead. Minute 15 into the second quarter. Huertas guarded by Ronald Roon. His father played in Brazil. As there's a foul, I think Orlando Sanchez grabbed. 
Yes, and that's his foul on that. Or is Orlando's his second? Luis Flores and Yulis Baez comes in. Look at it. There's the screen and uh, the roll. Good look by Huentes. Hitting the screener with a pass. Two point guards for the Dominican on the court. Machado drives right. Here comes Jack Michael. Pops. It's good. Boy, and you're going to get on him. He can shoot the basketball. Generally speaking. Oh, look at that mistake by Villanueva. Just yeah. handed the ball to them on the inbounds. And now Calipari wants a timeout. Machado is a catch and shoot. Excellent percentage shooter from three point range. Huertas, they smell blood. Trying to get the ball inside the headsheimer against yep. Bias. Yeah, he's, he's got a height advantage. Strong. Yes, he is. But they miss. And here comes Ramon off the Martinez rebound. Well, they moved him out of step from where he was really comfortable for. Drives right, turns left, up and under. Blocked and fouled by Rafa Hetzheimer. Good individual move that time by Ramon. Going right, spinning. Gets the defender up close to him and then steps under. Hetzheimer has to come from behind and attempt the block. We'll take a look. Spins, goes fake, nice fake, and gets the defender off his feet, then goes up and under. Hetzheimer out of position. Horford's back, so splitter for the Dominican and Brazil, respectively, as Ronald Ramon will try to cut this four-point lead. And now Brazil goes big with both splitter and Hetzheimer in the ball game at the same time. Ramon, a 78% free throw shooter in this tournament. He's now made 8 of 10. He's an 80% free throw shooter. Look for Brazil now to really try to get the ball into their two bigs. Ronald plays for Limeiras in Brazil, in the Brazilian league, in the NBB, which is a league that's gaining strength. Um, as they broke away from the federation, they, they're trying to um, sort themselves out as Hetzheimer tries to low post against Horford. Wow. Yeah, offensive foul. Offensive foul, foul right. by Hetzheimer. Yeah, nice body. Alfred Horford bodied up. Didn't let Hetzheimer back him in. in good position. Hetzheimer goes up. Uses his left arm as we take a look here. He back now. Horford's right with him. Now watch. He, he uses his left arm as he goes up and knocks Horford uh, his arms away. Good call by the official. Good more for William Bound. Brazil yeah. will pressure. Yeah, full court pressure. Huertas picks up Ramon. John Kyle Perry calling out the play. Not the point guard. Over to Flores against Alex. Very active hands by Garcia. Alex Garcia. Here comes Jack Michael going left, turning against a double team. Over to Horford. Two seconds to shoot. Oh, just in time. And the Dominican Republic has now tied the game at 23 with seven minutes to go in the first half. Huertas. Oh, he no good. It. That's his shot. Now oh. here comes Horford leading the break. Nobody gets out of him tonight. Finally, Machado does, and he fouls him. Horford's done that quite a few times in this tournament. Well, he can handle the ball at 6'10. He can run. He is a complete package type of player. I like his game. I'd like to see him get a little bit more aggressive. As we see here, he turns and shoots over on a, on a jump shot here, squares up against the, uh, uh, the basket. I'd like to see him be more aggressive at the offensive end. He is a very unselfish player. He leads uh, this team in um, assists as well as scoring. They want 15 seconds on the shot clock. And he shoots 53% uh, for twos. He does not really take threes. He's taken a couple out of desperation when the clock is run down. But he's basically a post player. Come, can come out and, and hit the... Um, uh, hit shots from the foul line, an excellent free throw shooter, and the the uh, the elbow. As referee Sasha Polk is speaking English and Spanish to the control table, and now Anthony Jordan. We got 15 seconds on the 24 second yeah. clock. So Bias will inbound in a tie game, beautiful game, and this must be Gail the first non-Argentina game where every seat is filled. Oh, they're ready for the second game. Without but they also want to watch their, their next opponent, whoever it may be. Horford. 
to Ramon. Looking to go inside to Jack Martinez. Against Splitter. Splitter, he's going to try Banging. to back him in, bang in. Turn around, turn no around. space. Here comes Martinez, and he gets fouled by Splitter, and that becomes trouble. That would be his third. That's, Let's what see. They, that's what they want to do. Look at, look at the bang. Now he goes inside. He does a great spin move, gets inside, and only 6 7. He, Splitter is out of position, forced to foul. And now, because Hetzheimer is on the court, they bring in the third string center, yeah. Kyle Torres. And yeah. before you worry about it too much, this is not a great player in this tournament, but he is more than serviceable for Brazil. Wow, you know, Splitter, a little frustrated, a little dejected. Goes to the bench with three fouls. And yeah. Kyle Torres is also 6'11", 7 feet uh, right uh, in there. And uh, now they, they continue to stay with the two bigs in the lineup. This is what Magnano has done so well. He's brought in these young players and giving them enough minutes in important games to build their confidence. And they've played their best at the end. It's amazing. He is a great coach. As Jack Michael Martinez who suffered a car accident in 2001, and he was in traction, but six months later was back practicing on a basketball court. I tell you, he Makes is a throw. monster in there, particularly rebounding. He's got seven rebounds already in this ball game, and he's just 6'7". Down low to Alex. Finally, Jack Michael picks him up. No good. The ball's loose. Picked up by Cayo Torres. Three-pointer by Machado. Yeah. It is good. Offensive rebound by Brazil. That's Dominican the Republic out of position defensively. They find Machado wide open. No pressure. That's their yes. seventh the offensive rebound against the Dominican Republic's defensive rebound specialist. Here comes Horford. Yeah. Driving right. It's Man, good. That's what he does really well. Going right with his quickness. A great first step. Goes right up against Hetchheimer with his right hand over the left shoulder. Count it. And the Dominican is up by one. Hetchheimer. High post. Huertas going through the gauntlet. Takes the ball. Eight seconds to shoot. Going left. Stops. Pops. No good. Buys with the rebound. The Dominican can build on this lead. Yeah. Ramon doing a nice job on Huertas that time. Forced him to take a shot that he didn't want to do. Ramon over to Jack Michael. Look, looks to hand it off to Horford. Ten seconds to shoot. Now they look for the high-low with Martinez. They bunch up. They're crowding each other a bit. Martinez against Cayo. Elbow shot. No good. Nice box out that time by Brazil. All Brazil on the defensive boards. That's Cayo Torres with a double foul. Interesting. Oh, my. Oh, my. Cayo Torres and Martinez collided. Martinez, I believe, flopped. Yeah. And I, perhaps that's exactly what Sasha Okay, we'll take a look at it. We'll take a charging. look at it. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if that's a flop. He definitely a foul on, on Torres. Definitely a foul. And Martinez is livid as is uh, the fan John, base well, from the Dominican. Well, and, and, and John uh, Calapari is also livid. Is that is Martinez second foul he and, goes to the bench now Charlie Villanueva comes in and a misread by Huertas on Cayo Torres who never cut all the way to the basket we're going to take another look at it I, he just takes it that left arm and just puts it right across his show, uh, chest and um, and chin as Augusto Cesar Lima Brito comes in the 19 year old Power forward, backup power forward here. Another okay. one of those youngsters that we were talking about. Yeah, and he's uh, Flores drive, shoots and scores against Alex, no less. Not an easy thing in this tournament. And the Dominican is up by three with 440 to go in the first half. Machado drives left, stops over to Cayo Torres. Easy shot against Flores. Yeah, too easy. Too easy if you're a Dominican Re Republic fan. It's a one-point game. It's a good game so far. Ramon drives, stops, floats, and scores. Oh, boy. Circus shot. You take it. Nice you, penetration. You expect to see Huertas do that. You don't expect that from Ramon. Ramon. Four minutes to go. High screen and roll. A three-pointer. Yep. Ties the game at 31. He could do that all night long if you continue to go behind the screen. A mistake for Dominican Republic and a snake 
Mistake for Ramon that time. You cannot go behind. You've got to fight through it, and the big man has got to step out and help. Nice uh, play by Horford. He cannot convert, though, and a high-low pass from Villanueva. Duetes, high screen and roll once again. Cayo rolls over to Cesar for the shot. It's good! And now Brazil is starting to shoot the ball better. Starting to get themselves in the right kind of tempo. And they take the lead, 33-31, with 3.28 to go and a timeout by John Calipari of the Dominican Republic. Now, in World Championships, they will put a mic, a boom mic, and a camera on coaches, and they have no say. But in regional tournaments, the coach can opt out and say that they don't want to be bothered by a camera or a mic, and that's exactly what Rin Magnano has said from day one, emphatically. We've seen some Calipari huddles. It remains to be seen if Calipari has wised up and decided that he doesn't want to be bothered either. Yeah, and, and uh, I, I don't... Um I got to side with the coaches uh, on that one. I think that, you know, the timeouts uh, and the instructions, uh, whatever they may be, uh, I think that's between the coach and the team. Uh, um, and it's really not for the media. Now, you would think that Magnano, an Argentine, an Argentine, going to Brazil and leading their national team would be learning some Portuguese, but you'd be wrong. The <laughs> players now have to learn Spanish. And I should add, he's from Cordoba. Who do you think's in control? Oh. <laughs> He's from Cordoba, and, and Cordobans in Argentina have a certain sing-song quality to their speech, so I can imagine that Brazilians may not understand their normal uh, Argentine, but they fully understand people from Cordoba. And uh, if, if you look at here, there, there, there's a screen, and he goes behind. He's no one within six feet. I mean, he just lines it up. But where does shoot from his right shoulder? And then driving, and then Lima goes out to the foul uh, line, 18 feet out. Gets a pass. He's got a wide open shot. So these last two times, Dominican Republic has got to get out on the shooter. They got to close out a little bit better. Brazil starting to shoot the ball a little bit better. They're high, high percentage shots. The three three point shooting is now up to forty percent. And sitting next to us, Gail Goodrich is the brain trust of Julio Lamas. His scouts taking notes, casing their next opponent. Ramon, pick and roll. Oh, nice fake. A drive going right. Another tough shot by Horford. Made yeah. tough by Caio Torres. Him, he had him going left. If he could have continued. But again, he likes to come back right. That's his tendency. Brazil is playing him for that right hand. They won. And he ended up having to make a tough shot. Another shot by Huertas, who takes a shot from his shoulder, not from above his head. Up ahead to Francisco Garcia for the easy lay-in. Yeah, the run out. It's a tie game at 33, 2.45 to go in the second quarter. Now, uh, Dominican Republic has made a switch, brought in Gar uh, uh, Francisco Garcia, the bigger man, to guard uh, uh, Huetes, and a little bit better defender and can uh, fight over that, uh, that high screen and roll pick. Machal is guarded by Ramon, a shorter opponent. He drives, strong hand, and Ramon holds the ball, but apparently got enough of the arm be called for a foul well at the area in there he reached in when you reach in Jenny we're gonna see here he's in pretty good position but there's a reach in good call by the official they don't trust Caio Torres enough as we see the fast break opportunity for the Dominican they just don't trust him to give him the ball one-on-one -on -one down low against Horford they will do the pick and roll with him but not give him the ball down low as Machado the veteran he suffered through this drought more than any other player Alex would be the only other player who's been with the team for 11 years who suffered as much. If they win tonight, it'll be a very sweet victory for them and for Brazil, a country of 191 million people. Ramon comes out, and Flores is back in for the Dominican. Puentes with really solid full-court pressure. A premium on ball handling for the Dominican right now. Baez, guarded by Machado. Recovering from the right calf injury. And Flores had a shot. Drives, tries to pop it, but Cayo Torres does his best soccer imitation. Football imitation, I should say. We're going to take a look in there. He kicked it out. So it's 14 Suck seconds off. on the possession. Soccer style. No, football, remember. That's football. Soccer's only in the States. Uh, Villanueva. To Garcia, we've seen one, but oh, we don't see the second one. Really, a tough 
falling away off balance shot there. Well, he made one like that. I know he made one, but that's a that good high percentage shot. He can get a better shot than that. That was too quick. I know he's looking to score. They need him to score, but that's a tough shot. And fadeaway threes don't come often. Less than two minutes to go. Good defense on the screen and roll that time. Machado with a three. No good. Rebounded by Horford. So now the Dominican look, is looking for the tie or the lead. Down to Villanueva against Machado. Strong to the hoop. Oh, Ooh, he God. gets the basket. That's what and the foul by Torres. That's the kind of move we like to see from Charlie Villanueva. That's the kind of move that if you watched him in the NBA, you like to see. He goes left. Now he gets in good position. goes hard. He double pumps, comes over with the, the right hand, creates the contact. That's the kind of play As that we we've see. all seen in the NBA. See Nesto Garcia on the right, Jermon Mincy on the left. Garcia is an assistant coach of Julio Lamas, um, the Argentine head coach. And Mincy played for Puerto Rico during its glory years and also played for uh, the Peñarol, the team that plays in this arena in Mar del Plata. And I like the lineup that the Dominican Republic has now. they got a bigger lineup. they got Garcia playing Juete. He's got a little bit of size on him. Guilherme wants to run Villanueva ragged because he knows he can't do that. Cayo Torres with the dribble. Oh, he falls down. And the foul is on Garcia. Garcia cannot believe it. And Cali Parry studying Anthony Jordan, who understands him fully. That was awful. And we cannot translate what's being said right now we'll take another look here he's in pretty good position garcia he did a great job of getting in there. he reaches in there there's the arm he falls down falls away i think the I, trip I, I think he's got a case of case though who does jordan or garcia garcia i do believe that he tripped inadvertently as he fell he tripped Cayo torres and that was probably the deciding factor for jordan He makes the shots. Fine shooting, free throw shooting team. It with the exception, of course, of Splitter. Um, and Bias is bringing the ball up, trying to alleviate some of the pressure that Huertes is putting on the point guard Flores. Um, now that, you know, 36 in. all, minute to go. Villanueva. No good. Oh! Horford came from above. Yeah, way finish. above the, rebound, uh, uh, the basket on that rebound. Huertas picked up by Garcia, really making his life difficult. Huerta leaves him behind. Now he has a switch of Villanueva. Yeah, to see now when, they, now when they switch. Floats. Yeah. The flamingo shot, no good. See, Here now when Flores. the Dominican switches on that point, on that the point guard, Garcia can, at 6 7 can guard. Yeah, he travels. Oh, yeah. He Flores just feet. picks up the dribble at the worst time. And he traveled. He's just shifted his pivot foot slightly. and Pull your song. As I was saying, when Garcia switches his high screen and roll, see, he can take the big guy. Now, here we're going to take a look at the yeah, He moves his feet, yeah. shuffles him, drags it. So Garcia can switch? He can switch and handle the big man. He, much better, much better uh, switch there. Oh, oh, off the reverse curl. Machado with a three, and he wants the foul from Baez. Brazil goes up by three with 10 seconds to go in the second quarter. Horford, left elbow, offline. That didn't even draw a rim, and that's the end of the first half. 39-36, what a game. A three-point difference. Eight days ago, the Dominican went to their locker room at halftime, up four. Now they're down three in what so far has been a defensive battle. Well, it really has, and uh, you know, Brazil's only shooting at 38% overall, 41 for uh, Brazil. But this is a team that is better than eight days ago for Brazil. They've been practicing uh, sometimes twice a day, um, and uh, this team is now uh, working together much better. Uh, they have uh, really improved just in the, in the eight days. Uh, you look at they have six assists, only two assists for Dominican Republic. They, you think that they may have to be... Uh, moving the ball and motion a little bit better. They've got four turnovers, so they're taking good care of the ball. Brazil has not been able to really get out and pass break points. They only got two, uh, and that's uh, 
Um, if you can hold Brazil to do that, then uh, you, that, you've that's got, amazing. That, that's very good because that their their defense really triggers their offense. We look at some of the, the scores. Garcia has made a very good contribution. He's got eight. Martinez seven, uh, and Machado's got ten coming off the bench and making a great contribution for Brazil with those three points. Shots. As we look at the top scores, Machado off the bench with 10, Francisco Garcia with 8, as well as Charlie Villanueva off the bench for the Dominican, and Al Horford with only 6, and worse, again, where's Thiago Splitter? Not there yet. So as look, we look at the highlights from the first half of the game. Yeah, you look at that, there's a great cro uh, crossover by the Kinho, and then they go right into to, uh, Martinez, who steps back, takes on Melissa 3, but great block by Horford coming from the weak side and then there is uh, Brazil on the early offense Garcia coming off the screen catch and shoot squares up having a nice half there's Garcia stepping back with his three and then once again the follow up the early offense by Hesheimer Jack Michael Martinez making his free throws he is two for two and he's got six points They've made eight out of nine free throws as Ronald Ramon with his best in. play of the night, and perhaps even of the tournament, all the way in against the Bigs. And then there's a run out here by Garcia. The assist by Ramon, Garcia with the fast break point. You know, with Machado coming off the bench and uh, hitting 10 points, the bench points, Brazil has got 21 bench points. So in between he and Hesheimer, they have really picked up in, uh, the offense for Brazil. Hesheimer has six. But Machado leads with 10 for Brazil. So as, uh, have you been surprised by this Dominican Republic team that was basically sliced and diced by Argentina its last time out? Well, you know, they did not play well. Argentina really took them to school. Um, but, you know, the matchups here are pretty good. Uh, exactly. They you, like these matchups. Yeah, they do like the matchups. You know, they beat Brazil, uh, you know, eight days ago, 79-74. Um, you know, Puentes did not have a great game. Uh, he had exactly, he lost, he lost 10 turnovers, uh, and he's an excellent guard. He's only got six here tonight, only two uh, assists. Uh, so they've done a good job of defending um, uh, Brazil, particularly the screen and roll. Uh, you know, Splitter doesn't uh, have any points, and you know I like here what they did in the second, uh, uh, late in the second half by bringing Garcia in because Garcia, if they're forced to switch, can guard the big man, uh, and I think that you know, they've got uh, a good solution uh, to one of the real strengths in the set offense uh, uh, for Brazil. Uh, let's review though, um, Gay. Yeah, let me just review what happens if you lose. One of tonight's games, you go. Well, you're disappointed, first of all, because well, you, you don't get a uh, qualifying bid to the uh, uh, Olympics next year. It's like swimming in ocean and dying at the shore. Um, the 20, 2012 London Olympic Games already has three teams qualified out of a total field of 12. And we spoke to uh, FIBA Secretary General Patrick Bauman. They're thinking for the next Olympics in Rio, that field may expand to 16, but it's only 12. The host UK is already in. The U.S. is world champions. They won that last year in Turkey. And newly crowned Tunisia as the African champion. A few Americas will contribute two teams out of this tournament. The winner here tonight and the winner in the game right after this one. And FIBA Europe will produce an additional two. Now, 24 teams in FIBA Europe, but only two advance uh, automatically to the, the top two to the Olympics. One will come from FIBA Asia and one from Oceania. And remember that is basically two countries, Australia and New Zealand, for a total of nine. That means that there are three at-large berths. And for that, you have to go to this last chance tournament uh, called in French as Repachage. And that will be held in a country to be later named by FIBA, but we know it will be between the 2nd and the 8th of July. There will be four European runner-ups. Three from the Americas. We know Venezuela will be one, and the losers of the losers of um, tonight's game will be as well. Um, so four from Europe, three from the Americas, two runners up from Asia, two from Africa, and the team that did not make it from Oceania will also compete there. That will be 12 teams. Those 12 teams will be spread amongst four groups of three teams each. Those three teams will then play round robin. 
The top two will advance into what they call the quarterfinal round. Now, eventually, you have to understand that Europe will be dominating this tournament no matter what, no matter where it's held. Figure this out, Gail. You've got, right now, you have Spain, France, Serbia, Lithuania, Germany, Turkey, Greece, and Russia. That's eight teams fighting for two spots. Whichever four teams come after the winner and the runner-up will be powerhouses. Yes. So I you mean, may have out of this the last chance teams, tournament, yeah. have three European teams sweep into the Olympics. So if you're an America's team, this may be the easiest game to get to London. Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, the Eurobasket, uh, which is going on right now, is very, very strong. They have a lot of talented players, uh, and uh, basketball has become a real focal uh, a point or a focal sport uh, for uh, Europe in addition, of course, to, to soccer. Uh, you know, we look at this ball game and some of the things that I said at the beginning of, of the game that uh, I think that the uh, Dominican Republic needed to do against this Brazil team. And I think they're doing a great job on their transition defense. Brazil only has one uh, fast break point. Uh, they're shooting the ball uh, adequately. But Garcia, of course, has made a great contribution. And he has, uh, you know, who hasn't shot well in this game. He's hit two for three. And in fact, uh, Dominican Republic, which is not a good three-point shooting team outside of Garcia. He's the only one that's taking uh, uh, the, the three-point shot. Of course, he's going to take three of them. Flores, I'd like to see him go uh, get a little bit more uh, aggressive offensively. He has not uh, made the contribution he did uh, against the uh, uh, Brazilian team uh, earlier eight days ago. Uh, he only has two points and uh, one assist. Uh, for Brazil, they have not got the uh, off in, in transition on the offensive end. They have not gotten uh, the fast break points, only two um, this first half. Uh, a couple of times we saw the early offense where they have had numbers, the fourth and fifth guy open uh, for the, uh, the jump shot. Uh, they have uh, not been able to really execute their screen and roll like they have um, early in the, uh, uh, this tournament. Um, and they have not really shot well. I mean, they shot uh, now 38% from three as they increased that in the second quarter uh, and only 38% for uh, uh, twos uh, in this tournament. Of course, they have been shooting at a 59% uh, rate. Um, so uh, it has been a, uh, a little bit of uh, what we talked about at the beginning of the tournament with respect to what to look for and uh, what to execute for each team. And that's why we have a 39-36 ball game in favor of Brazil. So, Gail, I'm going to bring in my friend Leo Montero. Leo is a very well-known personality here in Argentina, but it's this background that's interesting. He's a basketball player in a soccer country, in a football country. He played in the second division uh, league called here the TNA in Argentina so he knows his basketball and he's always kept his hand in basketball even though he hosts the most popular morning show for three hours on Telefes uh, network around the nation welcome to this halftime show Leo the reason why we bring you in among others um, is the fact that you know Argentina the players very well yeah. you've known them for years and they're, they're very confident telling you everything how do you find their mood before this game against Puerto Rico? Well, first of all, uh, thank you for all the compliments. Thank you. It's a, it's a they're they're deserved. <laughs> thank you very much. It's a pleasure for me to uh, share with you. Um, well, I know very much the guys from Argentina because they've been playing together all the time. Right. Uh, for a lot of years, for a decade. You knew, you've known them since they were in their teens, teenagers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Manu here in this same stadium, Manu Ginobili, in this same stadium, he was like... Uh, 16 years ago. Yeah, he was 19 or 20 years, and he was uh, with three awards, one of them in the mouth, after an all-star game here of our country. So, uh, they are very good players, they're very group who plays together, and I think that's what you saw, and that's what Gay saw too. Argentina is uh, it's a team, in, in, in all the words. And yet we were talking, we, ha we were, were having dinner last night, Leo. Yeah, very nice. Very no, thank, <laughs> Thanks to you. I, I was on scholarship. Very nice. Uh, but I, uh, well, I, come. I know he didn't come, but he, he has a rain check. Well, but okay, I was thank going, you, well, thank you. Didn't come. <laughs> thank you. I, I had a, I had a previous uh, dinner engagement. Yes, Perfect. but I was but I was going to say, Leo. Yeah. I mentioned yesterday, and, and I want to get your opinion on it, that the last two games, yeah. Argentina started out this tournament giving clinics on how to play team offense and really help defense. But the last two games, they focus their shots and their offense on two players, Luis Cola and Manu Ginobili. Yeah, that's true. And you said too 
that you saw on, on like in Argentina, like a uh, good NBA team. Right, like, like the, the, the way to play is like an NBA team. What it means that? Well, uh, is that good or bad for Argentina? If you play like an NBA team? You no, know, I, I, I told you yesterday that for me, uh, Brazil has too much to do with that because they play good defense against Argentina. Robert Maniano is the coach of Brazil, is an Argentinian guy, and he knows very well the guys. Example, Manu Ginobili stay with the ball a lot of time too because he doesn't have a pass open to a teammate open to receive the ball. And I thought the, 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 defense, the Brazilian defense was very good on him and Especially when Nocioni wasn't in the floor. Right, of course, Nocioni, Nocioni is a great... Y yeah, and I think, I think that was yeah. a real key. Like, when losing Nocioni there within the first five seconds, you know, he really spreads the court. And, it, you know, like, once again, it's, it's uh, Argentina basketball when they move the basketball. Now, is he going to play today, Nocioni? Uh, what's what's your yesterday, and uh, I'm 80% sure he's yeah, going to play. I, I, is he I, going to start? Is he going to, I don't know if he's going to start. I don't think so. I think he's going to play... A couple of minutes, and he told me, "Look, uh, he was talking with Ginobili, Chapu, Nocioni, and he said, Manu, I saw you were uh, in Brazil. You scratch. How do you say in English? Uh, you scratch with the defense right. when he was penetrating, because my, uh, Chapu was in there open on the on the corner to make a three. Right. So uh, that's good for Manu. That's good for the team because they play uh, more open on the floor, and Chapu's waiting and hoping." to get two or three baskets from there for the game tonight to open the floor for Manu Ginobili. Yeah, they, sp they spread the floor with uh, no Nocioni on the court, without a doubt. It's better for them. It, it is for much Manu better especially. for them. Yeah, I agree. We are talking to Leo Montero, who also has the most popular <laughs> radio sh basketball radio show on La Red. You can actually catch it on, on the Internet anywhere yeah. you are in the world. Um, if you speak, speak Spanish, that's the only requirement. And <laughs> these players from the from the Golden Generation will call you after games. And they, they very much feel like that's their home. But let me ask you another question. You've yep. seen Julio Lamas also coach and over many years. He's back again as the national team coach. In this tournament, I call him Professor Lamas. He's very <laughs> professorial in <laughs> yeah. his way. What have you seen about Lamas? What do you like? What do you, what have you found about him in this experience right here with this group? Well, first of all, Julio is a very good friend of mine from a lot of years. I love him. I think he's, uh, he and Sergio Hernandez, the previous coach, are two of the best with Maniano, the three better coach in Argentina, Argentina history. Um, I think right now, right now he's nervous. He's anxious too. He's doing a uh, great job with the players. I love, like, uh, Julio coach the team. And uh, he's enjoying it at the same time. Right. Because he said all the time that these players make his work and make his job easier. And because yet they, they easy to, to, to coach. And yet he had a choice to bring perhaps some younger players to begin to have yeah. them learn from the pros and get ready for London. He chose to go with a very veteran team. Yeah, the ex experienced team is that we have here. That is why it's Pepe Sanchez, the other the other playmaker, the other guard with Prigioni, that is why Alberto can miss the uh, tournament, they, he, he was with an injury, right? and he just came here like, uh, you know, between, how do you say, between, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with a, a lot of care of him. Without a lot of practice, really. A lot of practice, but he, he, he took an option because he thought the experience for this kind of tournament was better for Argentina. One last question as we get ready for the second yeah. half. What is Puerto Rico going up against when you look at these 8,500 fans right here at Polideportivo? I don't know what they're gonna think. I think they're gonna they're gonna beat Argentina, of course. They have a, you know that they have good players like Arroyo and Jose Juan Barea. I think the Santiago. I don't know if he's gonna play. The word is he may play. He may even start, but I don't think he's gonna give him a lot of minutes. Maybe the same the same position like Nacion. Correct. For this game, but um, uh, I think Argentina is, is better than Puerto Rico. I think it's gonna be a game. I hope and I think uh, uh, talking basketball game. And Argentina is 10 points better than, than, than Puerto Rico. Now. Will it be loud in here? Sorry? Will it be loud in here? It a lot of noise. It will be. A lot of noise. <laughs> Extremely that's loud. That's what we hope, and that's what we want, and that's what we, we make the tournament to Argentina. Well, so a lot of noise for our guys. Well, thank you, Leo Montero. Thank if you. you ever are in Miami or New York, and you hear I people you. Spe <laughs> speaking Spanish, and you see someone at the center of the picture, that's probably Leo Montero. <laughs> thank you. Very Everybody much. knows him and loves him, and we thank you for coming at halftime. It's my pleasure. I'm very happy with my with my things here, with the TV guys, with the people. It's very nice with me. 
and uh, it's a pleasure for me to have you here in our country. So enjoy the transmission, and thank you very much. And dinner's on me in New York. Okay. Thank I'll you. Meet you in New York. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you, Leo Montero. Thank you very much. Leo Montero, again, the most popular morning personality here, happens to be a basketball p former player and a basketball person. And that in Argentina is a lot of fun. As we get underway for the second half, here comes the Dominican Republic down three, 39-36, alongside Hall of Famer Gail Goodrich. This is Alvaro Martina. Nice strip by Alex. Eulis Baez recovers. Ooh, tough pass by Jack Michael Martinez. Somehow Baez got it. Somehow he shoots, and somehow he got fouled. Well, he stays with a great hustle play. Just to give you an idea how important this ball game, in the first half, Huertas played all 20 minutes. Garcia also played all 20 minutes. We look at the uh, Scola there from uh, Argentina watching, watching the game. An important game then. Yeah. Very Critical. important. Critical. The Dominican Republic, once again, has never, ever played in an Olympic game. Ever. They've made a Worlds in 78. They've never made the Olympics. As a matter of fact, the best previous finish in an Olympic qualifier was seventh place twice, including the last time out in San Juan. And they're due. They feel like they're due. They spent an awful lot of money. They've brought in John Calipari and his coaching staff, largely, as uh, Francisco Garcia is hounding Marcelino Huerta. And they want this very badly. Looking to go inside to... Uh Hetzheimer. Interesting. They start with Hetzheimer, not with Splitter. Well, Splitter's got three fouls, so they want to pr preserve him. Here comes Martellino. In and out and in. Yeah, another offensive rebound there for Brazil. When Brazil gets an offensive rebound, it really puts the uh, Dominican Republic at uh, a disadvantage. It's a four-point game, and Huertas is just taking it to Flores. No foul. Who says that FIBA players are soft? They don't know this no, kind of not play. A, not at all. It's a very physical out here. Flores going left. He's got a spot, a shot over to Jack Michael. Rebounded, tipped in by Horford out of, out of the, the uh, basket. And here comes Huertas. He's looking at Marquinhos on the other corner. High Drives, screen roll. Floater. No putback from Hetzheimer. He didn't go for the backboard. He went for the rim. Flores picks up his dribble. That's when he gets in trouble. Over to Garcia. One-on-one -on -one oppor opportunity right here. A little isolation for Jack, Jack Michael. Michael. Banging with Hetzheimer. Yep. Goes left. Steps back. Ball no away. good. Tough shot. Touched by Horford. And trying to save by Horford, but it goes off his body. It'll be Brazil's ball. As we see Martin Leib on the left. Manu Ginobili center. Luis Cole on the right. In the middle, you see Hui, uh, Hul uh, Julio Lamas taking a look at their next opponent, whoever it may be. Head timer. Nice shot. Yeah, he got to come out on him. Once again, we see the versatility of this young center, the reserve center as he comes out, faces up. Jack Marco Martinez does not come out, doesn't even put his hand up. Uncontested 15-footer from the baseline. And Brazil goes up six. And John Kelly Parry talks it over. That's the largest lead by any team in this game. Six points. It's been a tough matchup here between Ren Magnano's Brazilian national team. And Magnano's the kind of coach, Gail, I've watched in this tournament. You may have scored. And when you come back up court and you walk right past him, he starts, to, starts telling you about the last defensive play that you missed something on. Well, he's a defensive-minded coach, no question about that. He's brought defense to this Brazil team. And that really is, in my opinion, the trademark of, of Brazil right now. I mean, they, they, they can score on, on the set offense, but they really have blown teams out with their... Um, a fast break and early offense. If we look here at the uh, the shooting percentages, 40 for Brazil on two points, 38 uh, for three points uh, shooting. Uh, Brazil is a has always been an offensive-minded uh, national team, but he's brought defense to them, and 
Uh, that's really why they've gotten where they have in this tournament. They've played excellent, excellent defense against Argentina. Uh, they forced Argentina into some areas and shots that they just did not feel comfortable and not want to do as we take a look at John Calipari and on his left is uh, or on the uh, the television uh, screen uh, Del Harris his assistant longtime uh, NBA um, coach and a nice high low they out of bounds oh. great out of bounds play Horford gets hit and he also hits Guillermo on the way down so he's holding his lower back yeah um, but it was a really nice uh, high low uh, Op, uh, opportunity there for um, the Dominican Republic. Now Horford's going to go to the line. We're going to take a look. He's pinned the defender. He goes up. He gets hit uh, and comes down, uh, it looks like, on his back a little bit. Horford has been an excellent uh, free throw shooter in this uh, uh, tournament, shooting 83%. As he has in the NBA, he is dangerous along that free throw line, whether for a free throw or for a two-pointer well he continues to impress me uh, yeah I really like his game as he shoots uh, and makes the the two free throws a late bloomer because his mother believed that because of his father playing professional basketball he may never surpass him and Garcia doing putting a little bit of pressure on who it is as he goes all the way lays it up but good switch off that time by uh, Baez and Horford has already surpassed his father Amply Tito Horford who played in Brazil by the way here comes Flores It's good. Yeah, and I like that. He, he didn't go too far and here here comes uh, Brazil right back at you Marquinhos drives left against Horford Over to the corner to Guilherme. That's dangerous in and out rebounded by Hetzheimer and put right back in Yeah, Hetzheimer. He has really improved his last week as he goes hard to the offensive board It's a four-point lead for Brazil Brazil just really comes right back at you at the offensive end. You had Jack Michael against Hetzheimer. Yeah, Hetzheimer. Isolation. Uh huh. Over right handed shot. No good. Missed it. Rebounded by Marquinhos. Look yeah. at this gazelle. Yeah, look at Bring him. the ball up court. Played for the New Orleans Hornets in the NBA. He had a cup of coffee there. A few games. Now he plays in the Brazilian league. Here comes Alex with the awkward side shot. No good. Marquinhos. No one on the offensive boards for Brazil that time. As Horford comes down, posts up early, goes right again, goes inside. No and, good. Oh, he might have got hit, too. Here no comes foul. Brazil right at you now. And Huerta loses the handle. Back to Alex, who can't find it. Over to Marquinhos. They still have numbers. They still have numbers, finally. Horford gets back into the defense. Inside the Hetzheimer. A flip up. No good. Horford with the rebound. And Manana thought he, uh, her timer was fouled. And Dominican Republic slows it down. They're down four as John Carl Perry calls out a pattern play. Bias down, pushed by Alex Garcia. Francisco over to Eulis Bias. Cross court to Horford. Drives He's right. Go right. Yep. You go all the way. We'll take the shot against Tough the backboard. Shot. He's against the board. It's a two point game. Five and a half to go in the third. Huertas brings it up the court slowly. Brazil has not, has missed the last three Olympic games. For a team that's already made 13 Olympics, that's unacceptable. Here comes Marquinhos. In and out, rebounded by Garcia. And right now, Dominican Republic owns the defensive boards. One shot, and No out. more. It's hard for, give him some room, give him some space. And Huertas shows going. the double team. Yep. Now that time he goes left, falls and away. And he makes the basket. Horford now with 12 points, five rebounds, and a block. Yeah, he's warming up. He ties the game at 45. We're and Magnano calls now. a timeout. Here he goes right, gets a little contact, continues to go right with a one-hander one off the glass. And now he's got some space here. He goes left, goes up. Now he falls away. He gathers. He gets his, his uh, balance. He would see it again. Shoots over the smaller defender. He's getting a lot of room as Rumen Magnano calls the timeout. Well, that is uh, Dominican Republic strength. Go to their big men. And let's see the shot distribution. Uh, Jack Michael Martinez with nine, four for with 14. That's 23 out of 39. Yep. That's yep. what they should have done from day one in this tournament. Well, they've gone away from their strength at times 
partly because they don't have a, a point guard that really kind of gets the game, partly because Cali Pyre hasn't really insisted on it. Well, I, I think that uh, you might say that they've learned from the previous games here at the tournament. I mean, this, you know, this is the game that counts. This is the game that they want. Yes, they beat Brazil earlier. The, the point is they've gotten to, the, to, to, to where they are now, and this is the game that they have to have to qualify for the Olympics next year. A country of seven plus million people, I refer to the Dominican Republic, will go, which is a baseball mad country, will go bonkers if this team makes an Olympic team. Why? Because they've only had teams in the Olympics twice in baseball in 84 and 92 and once in volleyball as Sasha Polk is warning Calipari that he will call him a technical foul if he doesn't stay under control and his assistants stay on the bench. They're giving warnings here in Mar del Plata. Garcia continues to guard and hound Huertes. Uh, reach it in. Don't want to do yeah, that. He try to pick his pocket as Machado's in. Guarded by Baez. They're denying the pass. They're doing a nice job of switching. Here they switch out. Against Martinez. Yeah. Huertas drives yeah. in the paint. Goes left. Picks up the dribble. Marquinhos fakes a three. Too late. Good run out that time by Garcia. Oh, but no. They didn't Whistle from the referee. Oh, no. my. Oh, oh, my run. goodness. Here comes Huertas with a drive. Back to Machado for the three. Oh, that's going to hurt. Oh, that really going to hurt because they, that 24-second clock ran out before the shot. Unreal. I know it's noisy in here, but I could hear it. And that, I don't think that's not a reviewable. Uh, no, it isn't. Uh, only at the end of the quarter, right. only to see if the, Scott, if the score counted or if the foot was on the three-point line. That's it. Ramon goes and gets it. Picks up his dribble. Now he's in trouble. That's a shoot. No rim. You cannot pick up your dribble. Here we go. Here, we're going to see. Take a look here. Now he hasn't shot it. No, it hasn't gone off as yet. That 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 was a call that was missed. As we see Luis Flores get back in the game, it is a three-point lead for Brazil. They've got the ball, and Luis cannot come in because Calipari did not report the substitution on time. Headsimer. To Marcelino. Yep. Look at Machado screen. drives over to Hetzheimer from the free throw line. It's good. Yeah, he drove and the defense collapsed. They hit Hetzheimer who just spots up there at the foul line. Now Brazil has a five point win, um, lead. Largest lead was six. Horford drives. Here comes Machado. Outside of buys. Loses Henley. Double, double dribble. dribble. Yeah, he double dribbled. As Forrest gets back in the game, and Baez will go to the bench. We'll take a look at uh, here. Uh, we didn't see the, the fact that he that he caught the ball. He actually dribbled lost it. control and dribbled it. And then picked it up. Yep. And then start again. Classic. Here comes Huertas. Back to no one in particular. That's one of the ten turnovers. Type of play he had with a turnover game against the Dominicans. Yeah, he got himself up in the air and just didn't know where to go. Forward inside decides. the Jack Michael. Blocked, blocked and fouled by Hetzheimer. And that is Hetzheimer's third. So he's got three. Splitter's got three. We still have three minutes to go in the uh, nice little pass as the defender comes to it. We still have Hetzheimer's out of, out of position, and reaches and fouls. We still have three minutes to go in the third quarter. And, and both big men for Brazil now have three fouls. And we still have Caio Torres on the bench available with two fouls. So Jack Michael Martinez will go to the line. He's very outspoken. Um, if he doesn't like something, he'll let you know. He'll let the coach know. A lot of coaches and teams don't like that. So he's been bouncing around from team to team, even though he's an obvious obviously talented player well you, you know where you stand when you uh speak with uh, jack michael and this is a free throw now venezuela is in for al horford to give him a couple minutes rest here before the fourth quarter alex to marquinhos over to marcelino as they try to machado to come they free him machado off the picks. reverse curl and that's become a registered trademark of marcelino machado well he comes off the screen and he can shoot it quick squares up from downtown 
That's three more for him. Seven point lead, two and a half to go in the third. He's got 16 coming off the bench as they go look to go into oh. Jack Michael. Against Hetzheimer, he yep. wants another foul yep. or a shot. Here we go. Well, he wants both. Turns right. Nice move by Jack Michael. Yeah, really a good shot, a good time there. A backing Hetzheimer down in. Hetzheimer did not want a, a foul. Gave him a little pump fake. Got him where he wanted. Got his uh, timing. And then shot the ball with a little right-handed hook over the... Uh, his left shoulder. Another shot by Hetzheimer, not not uh, charged by the referees, and a three. And Jack Michael Martinez bounces the ball almost all the way up to the roof. He is frustrated. Brazil does a nice job of getting into it. John Calipari wants a timeout. He's not going to get it. Now it's an eight-point game. Brazil is warming up on those threes. The largest lead so far. There's Charlie. He's got a real good size advantage. You just have to turn and shoot over him. Bad shot, but there is Mar Martinez. And he takes a foul, a hard foul from Machado. And I have to say, before Moncho Monsalve took over this team, Machado would have never fouled him that hard. Look at that. There's the, there, there's the foul. He gets hit in the head. Finally, they call it after about three times of the foul. As we see Machado also score a three. Yeah, see, they get into the lane, and then they kick it out to Marquinho, who spots up. And it's 6-9. He just shoots over the running defender. Here comes Jack Michael Martinez. And he makes the first free throw. So he's played in Mexico, plays in Venezuela a lot. Has played in Puerto Rico, plays, of course, in his native Dominican Republic. And he's got Went to Artesia, Artesia High School in California. He's got uh, 10 points and 11 rebounds, a double-double already. Takes his time. Now he's got 11 throws. So we have a substitution. Elise Bias comes in. Out goes Ronald Ramon. No changes for Brazil. And Flores is, is going to guard Garcia. And Francisco Garcia continues to hound Huerta's full court. Brazil playing with essentially a six-man rotation. Alex drives right, lays it left, touched by Hetzheimer, back in Brazilian hands, over to Machado, in and out, rebounded by Flores. Boy, the Dominican dodged the bullet. They sure did. Here's Jack Michael again. They're going to go right at Hetzheimer. Faces the basket, goes left, yep. goes right, up and under. Yep, left, left hand, hand. Oh, and the foul. Yes. And that one really complicates matters for Magnano okay. as his big men start to accumulate fouls. Well, he has been a monster in the world post. He is so strong. I mean, we see him. He wants to go right. This time the defender plays him right. He goes right. He fakes left. Then goes, wants to go right. Steps under with the left hand and shoots with the left hand to protect the ball from the defender. Gets the foul. The fourth the foul and the basket. And he'll have a free throw as Ruben Magnano calls a timeout. And just like that, Dominican Republic is now down only four. So they've got a player that's has that's 12 points and eight rebounds in 18 minutes of play. And he Rafa Hetzheimer out with four fouls. And the Dominican Republic now has 30 points in the paint to only 12 by Brazil. But the bench points for Brazil, the great contribution led by Machado, who's off the bench with 16. They have a total of 33 points coming off the bench. Fast break points, they still only have two. Dominican Republic doing a nice job in transition of getting back. Rebounds. Dominican Republic has 29, 28 for, excuse me, Brazil has 29, 28 for Brazil. So that's even. As we got ourselves a ball game. It, it does. It's a four point game. Minute four to go in the third. And the fans are waiting for Puerto Rico, Argentina next. The other semifinal matchup. Again, the winners tonight get an automatic bid to them. You'll see the winners celebrate like they just won the tournament and because this, they'll get a berth in the Olympics. And if this game goes down to the wire, I think you're going to see the 8,500, the fans here, really start to root for the Dominican Republic. They would like to get Brazil out of the, uh, in effect, the tournament and not qualify. Um, you know, I think that uh, also that right now Argentina would prefer to play Dominican Republic, who they handled easily um, in, in their game where Brazil actually beat um, Argentina. Yes, indeed. As Jack Michael makes the shot, it would be 
a double win for the fans here if they can pull that off. So they'll be rooting for the Dominican Republic at the end of this Let's game. Let's see what Brazil tries to do Go coming out of the timeout. They, they're switching on every screen. And here Machado. Against Jack Michael Martinez yeah. going left, yeah, driving right, right past him. Oh. Over the splitter. Who gets the foul and the basket as well. Yeah, and now that's our first foul in this quarter. So when that ball went to splitter, they should have fouled him right now. He's beat right now. He's got that nice dish off now. You've got to foul him before he goes up yeah. and make sure he does not make that basket. Splitter, not a good free throw shooter, as we know. Oh, 40, he goes, he 42% goes, Yeah, he goes to, goes to the line, 45 seconds to go, and that's the first foul in Dominican Republic. So they had fouls to give uh, that could have, if they could have fouled him as soon as he got the ball, they would have had uh, Brazil take the ball out. Marquinhos has some kind of uh, open wound in his left forearm, so he has to leave the game, and in comes the youngster, 19-year-old Augusto Cesar Lima Brito. Splitter will go to the line. He makes it. Yep. Trying to, trying to shut us up. Yep. That's I, good. I'd rather be shut up than to watch him make 42% of his free throws. Villanueva, top of the key. Offline. 30 seconds to go in a six-point Brazilian lead. Still trying to get the gauge the uh, his shot. Yeah, 33 seconds for Brazil. Let's see if they try to get two for one. Huertas. Still hounded by Garcia. The high screen and roll. Goes right around. Over the split. Oh, Blocked oh, by block. Villanueva. Here the break. comes Forrest. Going left. Driving. Missing. But a foul on the shot by Alex. A terrific ball. He's going right down the lane. Martinez is, is late. And then he goes up. And Charlie just says, not in here. Get it out of here. Terrific defensive play that time by Charlie. Then we see the foul on the break as Forrest goes hard to the, to the hoop. Jack Michael Martinez will take a seat. And he gets a round of applause. Once and Al Horford is back in the game. And 13.8 uh, seconds to go. Joviani comes in for Brazil. Another yeah. shooter, Benita. Vitor Benita, Vitor Benita, the other youngster, the 21 yeah. year old. And he is a terrific three point shooter. He comes in. This is the uh, first time that he's been in the ball game yeah. tonight, but he. It's a six man rotation, basically, so far. Well, yeah, it really and has. And right now. McNano has all shooters on the court uh, except for uh, the big man, uh, Tiago Splitter. Jack Michael Martinez goes to the bench with 14 points, 11 rebounds, and an assist as Manuel Fortuna gets ready to check into the game. Boris makes the free throws, and now it is a four-point game. Fortuna is in. For Flores is out, and they yeah. don't have any ball handling. This is strictly for defensive purposes. Yeah, that, that is absolutely true. And they've got one foul, so you know they can they can foul here. They should foul right now. Oh, they're gonna. Call oh it. no, the unsportsmanlike foul, two free throws in a possession. Yep. And Huertas clearly was held, and he sold it very well too. Well, yeah, he was completely ahead of the, the defender Garcia. Uh, he should have. If he was going to foul him, he should have started fouling him. But he's completely out, and he held him. And the officials got it right. Oh, and he goes to the line and misses. As Flores will come in. Yep. As Garcia now has, uh, what, two, two fouls. He's going to come out, I believe. Yep. Villanueva and Fortuna No, no, out. Fortuna's coming out. Okay. Martinez and Flores in splitters in for Brazil. Yep. Marquinhos is out. Eight seconds. And Five. now... One shot for Brazil. To Huertas. Stops. Drives against Martinez. Floats it in. Yeah. And he gets the basket. And that's the end of the third quarter. And Boy, a costly, two costly fouls. One not given by Ulis Bias on splitter. Another one given too late and too hard by Garcia on Huertas. And now Brazil will rest and get ready to start the fourth quarter with a seven-point lead. But take a look here. He goes around Martinez with a little floater, uses his quickness on the run, lays it up, and Huertas, who is a real clutch player, now has 11. He plays his best uh, when it's counted upon. 
The other night, he did not play particularly well for three quarters, then just took the game over in the fourth quarter. Tonight, he's got 11 points. He's got now five assists. We look at some of the stats. Brazil, 42% for two, 38% for three. And also look at Dominican Republic, only two assists versus 10 for Brazil. And they've got six turnovers. So six turnovers after three quarters is pretty good. Brazil only has four turnovers, however. Um, and But the bench points for Brazil has been really devastating to uh, Dominican Republic. They've got 33. Uh, coming off the bench to only 12 for the Dominican Republic. Uh, the second chance points, they've got 13 to 5 for the Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic, however, has done a great job in getting points in the paint. They have 30. Brazil has had to rely on their three-point shooting. Boy, but end of quarter management was a little weak there. I mean, the fouling, I mean, well, the, uh, you know, Spies is a pro. He should have fouled Flitter. Brazil, no question about it. Brazil, uh, once again, is able to close out the quarter like they have so many times in this tournament. So now, now it's a down seven point lead. to the fourth quarter. Brazil with a seven-point lead. An Olympic berth at stake. This Dominican Republic team already has achieved, a, a, at a minimum, a, a fourth place finish. And that's their best in Olympic qualifying, but that's no consolation. And there's no saying that if they make that last chance qualifier in July of next year, they'll bring this team. Huertas. And to Machado, back to Marcelino Huertas. Over to Alec, who pops out. Screened by Splitter, he drives all the way to the corner. Could well guarded by, by Garcia. Dominican. Now here comes Guilherme, short on the three. Rebounded by Baez. Yeah, Francisco Garcia did a great job of closing out Machado there on the baseline uh, where he was posted up. And for a, a foul point. by Guilherme on Horford. That's a mismatch. Yeah, it is a mismatch. They, again, they've got to go into Horford as much as they can. I'd like to see Horford touch the ball every time down the court. He leads his team in assists. Something happens when Horford touches the ball. He's generally going to get a good high percentage shot or he's going to make an assist. The defense has to really focus on Horford a lot. So I'd like to see him touch the ball whether he scores or not. Now there's oh, oh, left-handed oh, shot against the wow. basket terrific. on a jump stop. Yeah, a terrific move going left with a jump stop and then shooting the ball with his left hand. Horford, um, Huertas played him very, very well. It's a five-point game. But a good defense and just better offense and now and we a have foul a... on splitter yes and that will be for his fourth trouble for magnano yeah he really does have uh, some trouble now he's going to come in with ko taught the taught us excuse me and we're going to take a look here as oh he faked it he, 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 he you know i gotta tell you jack michael martinez really uh flopped on that one but he's had two that were fouls against him that he did not uh, get the benefit of the doubt, perhaps. Do, do you think Jack Michael Martinez might have played a little soccer? No, so no, because, no, no. Because all those soccer players, he oh, was he was born a 50 year old. Yeah, but 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 all those soccer players really uh, flop. And, no, but they don't really play a lot of soccer in Dominican. No, he I'm was just, just savvy. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Born savvy. Yeah. Okay, now. And remember, it's football, not soccer. Yeah. As we see in along the baseline, Flor Melendez, the Puerto Rican coach, watching. The game from a nice seat. Flores drives Flores. against Huertas. Another jump stop. Yeah. Nice leap. Short. Rebounded by Jack Michael. Just stole it from three Brazilian players. Over to oh. Horford. They look for the high-low, but Caio overplays. Yeah. They can't change the angle yeah, on did. the pass. He did a nice job of Horford that. drives left. Steps back on the right. No good, and on that on that rebound, there's a foul by Jack Michael Martinez holding on to Cayo Torres, his third. Well, Torres did a great job of denying Martinez the ball. He just got inside. Let's we'll see if we we'll take a look. There's the shot, the fall away. Uh, yeah, it looks like there's a lot of contact, and he, he could have called that. There's a lot of contact in there. Machado to Marquinho to Marcelino. Down to Alex now against he, Flores. Yeah, he's going to post up. He's stronger. Outside yeah. to Huertas. In the crease. It's good. The floater yeah, Garcia, by Marcelino Huertas. Garcia got caught that time watching. 
Puetes goes to the open spot, then takes one dribble when he gets the ball and a little floater. And two minutes into the game, it's a seven, into the fourth quarter, it's a seven-point lead, and Garcia just takes his eye off the ball, looks at Forza as if Forza, it was Forza's bad pass. He just made yeah, a mistake. We're going to take a look. There it is a bad pass. It's at his knees, and Garcia takes his ball, uh, eyes off the ball. See, the, Garcia was watching that time, and, and uh, Puetes just goes, gets the ball as... Garcia comes out. He goes right around him. Seven-point game. Marcelinho holds on to the ball. Feeds Cayo Torres down low. Yeah, one-on-one. -on -one, big, right strong, right-hander. No good. Rebounded by Horford. Ronald Ramon on the court for the Dominican. Over to Jack Michael. He looks at the high-low. Not there. He drives left. Back out to Ramon for the three. No good. Put back, no good, and rebounded by Cayo Torres. Dominican taking any chance of fast break points out of this game. It's a 4 2 partial. 4 2. In Flores the fast coming break back in. Yeah, Garcia Flores back in for get Garcia. You get Francis, Garcia, give him a little bit of, of a rest here. Marcelinho, high pick and roll, high screen, he feeds Cayo, did he travel? No, he just lays it in. Yeah, they did a nice job of really clearing that side. Nine no point game. No defender there, able to help. High screen and roll, Duete is doing a great job. Ramon, it's a three and they needed that badly. Now it's a six point game with 6.50 to go. And the Dominican Republic hanging tough here. Alex. Huertas picks up the ball. Here now Marquinho comes a high goes, screen and roll. And Marquinho goes to the favorite spot. Over to Marquinho. Drives. Corner shot by Alex. A three. It's in. Another three-pointer by Brazil. This time by Alex. His first. And Brazil really warming up, hitting those threes. They are a good shooting three team. They now have shot their, their average, 39%. Ramon is having trouble handling the ball. 12 seconds to shoot over to Flores. Boy, to now pressure defense here. Pass the ball. Too yeah. much dribbling. Yep, too they much. drive. Tough shot yeah. blocked by Alex. And now Brazil picks up the ball. Not a good decision. There's Alex on the... Uh, oh, he traveled. He traveled, yeah. He traveled, yes, indeed. Oh, yeah. No he, no basket. Yeah, I tried to get his feet uh, set so he could go to the basket. Alex does not like the call, but I think the officials got it right. And he traveled. Yeah. He traveled. So now it's a nine-point game. Six minutes to go in regulation. Did they, did and Jim, John Calipari calls the timeout. Did they call, uh, count that basket? Argentina next, but this is not over yet. Now they had Ronald Ramon in the court, and their their offense just stalled. Is that a credit to Brazil or simply? Well, I think you know. Let's let's give credit to Brazil's guards. They are really excellent, excellent. But I think the Dominican Republic really went away from what they do best, and then they got to look inside. And they missed, uh, they missed Martinez inside there once. They missed Horford inside. And then the clock starts to run down, and you get uh, a little bit of pressure. You got the, the, the defensive pressure. You got the clock running down. And you end up taking a very difficult shot. Martinez with three fouls. Horford does not have a foul in this game. Let's see. One, two. Oh, Lord, yes. He was going to take it all the way to Brazilia. One, two, three. Cha cha cha. Yep. Well, no. Samba. Ramon. Back in the game. Now Horford's got great position. Now. Oh, nice the ball touch pass to Martinez. Pass. Yes, was that pretty? Oh, terrific out of bounds play by Kyle Powery. 
Horford posted up. He had great position. And, and then they hit Martinez rolling to the basket up on the weak side. Alex. Great teamwork. They're denying his left. Here comes Marcelino Huertas. And they're going to call for the high screen and roll. Head Didn't timer, get it. Can't even get it. Now he shows up with six seconds to shoot. Over to Machado. All alone for a three. It's in. Yeah, Bias made a mistake. He went to help on Hetzheimer. Boy, just makes a great decision. As Machado just posts up, you got to help from the other side, not that side. It's a 10 point game. Halfway through the fourth. Inside the Horford double team. Tough shot. Yep. No good. Jack right. Michael Martinez with the putback. It's good. He shoved Torres, but that was not called. I'll tell you, how good is he on the offensive boards? Where would they be without him tonight? 16 points, 13 rebounds, five of them offensive. Oh, you got to switch out, which is not good. He's got to get back. Oh, he's got Marquinhos all alone, but he yep. didn't see him. He went for the two, and he makes it. It is now a 10-point game again. And Brazil is really shooting lights out here in this fourth quarter. Ramon. And he's going to run the screen and roll. Over to Horford. Goes left. Pops out. It's good. All net for Al Horford. Going left. Spots up left. It is. He's got Makes 14 jumper. points, 6 rebounds, a block, and a steal. Typical Al Horford game. Turnaround shot by Machado. No good. Rebounded by Jack Michael Martinez. Let's yeah. see. They're down eight now with less than four to go. And they go right away in the early offense right into Horford. Horford's got to take him one-on-one. -on -one. Three posts. Get it back to him. No, he nope. decides to drive. And they're crowding each other down there. Yep, he works Jack in. Michael. No yep. room for him. He's got to shoot. Oh, too early. But he makes the shot. Oh it's a three my. by Ron well, Ramon. That was three. not in the script for Ruben Magnano. It is a five-point game. Three and a half to go. In regulation. We'll take a look at He's got him there. He wants it. Fakes nowhere to go. Passes out to Ramon. He spotted up. Brazil slow to get to the shooter. They've got him boxed in there. Slow to get to the shooter. Box to the shooter. He shoots the jump shot from the, the three point line. Counted. 74 69. You know, this is not a good three. Point, point shooting team. I re I'm referring to the Dominican Republic, but tonight, four of seven, 57 percent. Right. And two of the uh, Ramon has hit uh, two for three, and so has Garcia. Uh, the only other person to take a three was Charlie Venezuela. But they, and, you're right. They're not a good three-point shooting team. Uh, to their credit, they've only taken seven uh, tonight. Another key four. Uh, for Brazil. Yeah, another key of the game um, working in favor of the Dominicans is free throw shooting. 17 of 20, that's 85 percent. The Brazilians we know is one of the worst, if not the worst, free throw shooting team in, in this tournament. They're now down to 71 percent. Yeah, but Brazil, if you look at the three point shooting, that really sort of tells the, the story of this game. They have made six more threes. That's 18 more points. Same crew. Garcia back in the game, however. Guilherme, Hetzheimer with his four fouls in the game. Alex, Machado, and Huertas on the court for Brazil. And pressure from the Dominican token. Five-point game. Three and a half to go. Down to Hetzheimer. Works his way. Into the basket against Jack Michael Martinez, who has three fouls. Hedsheimer over shooting that little hook shot over his left shoulder after getting great deep position. And now there's a lob pass into Horford, Horford and Horford's going to go up strong. Lays it in on the foul yeah. by Guilherme. Another great uh, timeout play called by Carapari as and they bring, bring Martinez high, bringing out one of the big men high, and then Horford. There it is, over Giovanini, Giovanna, excuse me, Giovanoni. Giovanoni. The second high-low pass from Martinez to Horford. Nice floater and great concentration by Horford not to travel as he gathers himself. And now, and he now. He can cut the lead to four. And Marquinho 
Another big for Brazil at 6'9 is coming in, and he's going to replace Guilherme with five fouls. He's saying goodbye. Three he's, points, yeah. three rebounds, one block. Their top scorer, their second best rebounder, great steals man, and a veteran. He's out for the last three minutes, eight seconds. It's a four point game. This is very interesting. And where. Uh, Ramon guarding Huertas. Here comes the screen. The oh, they left Hotzheimer alone. They well, couldn't feed him. He, he's got him back now. He gets the position inside. Now we got a one on one situation. Drive left Plus against Horford. Two. And he fouls. Yeah. Marquinho. I'll tell you, he's got some quickness for a 6 9 uh, forward where he goes right around Horford. He's inside. He goes up with the left hand. Horford hits him with the body. He is impressive. 6'9", 27 years old. Yep, but in Vegas in the 2007 um, Olympic qualifier, that that team was beating a, an underhanded, an undermanned Argentina team by six with about three minutes to go. He let himself destructed. Marquinho left the game right after, didn't go back to home with his team. And... Nazinho, who hasn't played tonight, refused to go on the court. They just melted down. Well, he's 12 for 12 from the line in this tournament. But the last remaining perfect free throw shooter, as Pinera of Cuba, is already home. And that team, had they beaten Argentina in that game, would have qualified for the Olympics. Simple as that. Yeah. They blew it. No. Splitters comes in the game to, to match the two bigs for R R Lopez Dominican from outside. Republic. Tapped out to Jack Michael Martinez. Brazil with a six point lead. Ramon. Hofer's got good position. Look inside. He's not looking. A lot of dribbling. No, a lot of Double dribbling. team. Over to Horford. Up top. Drives right. Crosses left. Steps back from the free throw line. Short. Rebounded by Machado. Over to Alex. And then hand it off to Huertas, right near the half-court line. He's going to look for the high screen and roll here. They're trying to run uh, Machado off the uh, the screen down low. Now he's going to use the screen and roll. Over to Splitter. Splitter. Leave him alone. Now Machado comes off. Short. The screen misses the shot. Yep. And Mike, Jack Michael Martinez now with his 15th rebound. And they want to go to try to get something for Garcia here. Horford. He's trying to get the ball. Yeah, and Alex has just been hanging, grabbing him. Here comes Horford. Yep. Tough shot. And he'll go to the line. <laughs> Everybody yeah. was waiting for that ball to go in. And that is five on Hetzheimer. He's got to go. Yep. That's the second Brazilian out. I mean, it's been a grind for Brazil tonight. Well, yeah, between got... Jack Michael Martinez and Al Horford. Well, as we said at the top of the show, Dominican Republic offensively has to go to their bigs. They have done that. More, for most of the ball game when they've fallen behind the, there was a period of time when they went away from that but now they're going right back to it Horford goes to the line makes hits, the first yeah and that is number 19 for him on the game Marcelinho Machado the top scorer for Brazil with 19 he's 5 of, three, of 8 from behind the arc oh look at the look at the shoving and the grabbing and the Slapping. And it looked like it went off Brazil, but it went off Jack Michael. And I tell you, Jack, Kali Parry is close with technical. Well, he is close. He's out on the floor, and, you know, he doesn't understand uh, FIBA basketball officials, I don't think, uh, all that well. And uh, as this is his first uh, international game, and there's what is that's for the floater. Yeah, but he no was good. bothered by uh, Horford. Horford that time. Horford really altered that shot defensively five-point game back to Horford drives left turns right, right. Foul. Tough shot no no good no foul splitter to Huertas Cali Perry's gonna burst a vein well that, he's looking for fouls he's still out on the court he's gonna get a technical he better he better step back he can't have a technical now. 55 seconds to go. Huertas is going Huertas all the way. drives all the way. Makes it's a good. great play. Great individual play that time. And makes it now a 
seven point game with and 50 seconds to go in Brazil. And Connor Parr is almost it. at half court. He is yeah. livid. And, and you know, and partic all particularly at the, at, the, at the U.S. official, Anthony Jordan. I mean, he is Anthony Jordan. Here, here we see who had to go all the way, goes around him, lays the ball up. Great individual play, and Anthony Jordan doesn't want to call a technical at this moment, point in time in this critical game. But I'll tell you, he 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 had every reason to do that because Car Power was out there almost to half court. Yep, this kind of refereeing it will break your heart. And if you're not if if you're not a veteran of FIBA wars. Get used to it. As the three referees now walk towards the control table just to get a drink of water. Remember, some of the best referees in this tournament come from the countries that have made it to the semifinal round from Argentina, Brazil, the Dominican, and Puerto Rico. Because of neutral country status, None of them are here. None of them will be in the next game either. Now, add to that, well, the fact that they don't, these these crews are just playing, I mean, refereeing together. Well, you know, the FIBA game is so physical, and right. they allow so much contact. It really puts a lot of strain on the officials as to what to call and what not to call. Yeah. And as a player, you want to have the, the, the fouls or the game called be, that is consistent. But I got to tell you, since the FIBA rules allow you to have so much call, contact, it is very hard. They could be they could be blowing the whistle just about on every call. I mean, every play, every touch of the ball. Um, and so it's hard as what what uh, what they allow, what what that you can do off the ball, the which, ball. what kind of contact, how much contact, yeah. and ball. you got to find a happy balance. And it's very difficult okay. for these officials. Let's get back in the game. It's a seven-point game. Less than 43 seconds to go. 18 on the possession. The entire Brazilian coaching staff is at the table. And, and Kyle Power again, is out on the court. I mean, this is unbelievable. Well, that's what and, happens and, when you... And, and and so the official walks over, tells him to get back. And Magnano, he, he's he's yelling. And, and now, and now uh, they, Kyle Power wants a, a technical on uh, Magnano. Well, he probably is on the court right now. He finally steps back. Well, both of these coaches are really into the game. It means so Ramon much. Ramon with a three. Oh, it is my. in. It is in. Oh, it's my. a four-point game. 36 yeah. seconds to go. And a full-court pressure. And a foul oh. on Marquinhos. Now, I've said it all along this, in this tournament. You've heard me say it, Gail. Ramon is worth a three-pointer per game, right? Well, he's got three of them. Except tonight. Exactly. Okay. Next foul that the uh, Dominican Republic commits will be a foul will be a to change um, possession foul no 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 it's be a shooting foul right to change possession yeah, yeah. oh but Garcia slips and you got the foul. rush you is on foul. the Dominican you're gonna have to foul it you're gonna have to foul it they still don't yeah, burning gonna, seconds you, and they finally do yeah you're not gonna take the ball away from him he's too good uh, with the ball it's a four-point game you got to extend the game and I, the I, game. I guarantee you the Argentine fans watching this are just shaking their head like why don't he foul him what, what's keeping him from fouling him? Yeah, he should have fouled earlier. He should have. That was a mistake. And you've seen that again? Remember the um, unsportsmanlike foul and Garcia on Huertas again? Yeah. And then the that lack of foul crossing. on Splitter? I mean, that may be the game right here. Seriously, it's a four-point game. Now it's a five-point game. It's Huertas has really come on here. Now has 18 points and seven assists. Been very, very clutch here in the fourth quarter. And how many turnovers? He has four. He has four. That's about his average. Two to one assist to turnover ratio. It is now a six-point game. And 20 they, seconds they to go. They need a three. Flores to the corner. Jack Michael Martinez Travel. over to Ramon. Another one. No good. Touch by Splitter. Goes out of bound. It'll be the Dominican's ball with 10 seconds to go. Six and, points. They need a three. And time is running out on the Dominican dream. Try Garcia is going to take it out, try to run Ramon off a double or a triple screen. Jack Michael fakes the three, steps back, throws it up. No good. Machado with the rebound and a foul. And Brazil is on his way to London. The last time 
they got an Olympic berth was in 1995 right here in Neuquén, Argentina. And you see an emotional coach Magnato. Oh, he was under a lot of pressure. That's They hired him for this, precisely for this. And now you see him treat his players like a father with smiles. It just takes this amount of accomplishment and achievement for Magnano to show his human side. Rebounded by Flores. Three seconds to go. Garcia over to Ramon. And the game is over. Brazil is back in the Olympics after a 16-year absence. They just beat the Dominican Republic 83-76 to advance to tomorrow's finals at the 2011 FIBA Americas Championships. A valiant effort for the Dominican Republic, but they fell short. Yeah, they did. And, you know, at the end of the day, it was really the three-point shooting, I thought, for Brazil in that fourth quarter. They hit a lot of real clutch shots. This guy, her... Huertas did a wonderful job of getting the ball to the open man. Got seven assists, 19 points. Machado off the bench with 20. They had 15 more points from the three-point range, and they start to celebrate here in Mar de Plata. The Verde Amarela is in force. A team that did not have Nene, Barbosa, nor Anderson Barajao. A team that played really inconsistent basketball early on in the tournament has left its best for last. Yeah, they really did. And, you know, you got to credit their defense. They really picked up as the tournament went along. And uh, obviously, as they celebrate, they're very, very happy. They came here with that goal is to get to London. And uh, that's what they did. The Dominican Republic leaves Mar del Plata with at least a fourth place finish. They will have to play the loser of Puerto Rico, Argentina coming up next to determine whether they end up third or fourth. They will be invited to the repechage tournament. We'll see if they can put together this kind of effort against some top European teams. This is their best finish ever in an Olympic qualifier. Fourth place, at least, maybe third. But that's just not enough. It's a bitter defeat. For a Dominican team that really had hoped to finally make the Olympic, but now it's Brazil that's celebrating, and they better leave the court at some point because we have another game to play. <laughs> you look at some of the stats, and uh, you know Brazil shot 46 percent, 40 percent from three-point range. Uh, rebounds, uh, they lost the rebound edge to Dominican Republic. That strong front line of Horford and Martinez, 13 assists, only four assists for Dominican Republic. What a game. What a game. Marcelinho Machado off the bench with 20 points. Jack Michael Martinez leading four of five main categories. And well, outstanding game by Jack Michael. Yeah, he, he just had a terrific uh, game. Had a terrific tournament. As you see, 18 points and 15 rebounds. And you look at some of the other top scores. Huertas had 19. Uh, Horford, 18. Hetzheimer did a great job off the bench with 14 as the Machado did with 20.